baseball bat. <laughs> and punched a hole in the door. Today is a big day. It's a big day, actually. Today is a giant day, actually. We're not even joking. I have been, ever since, whoever told us, who told us about Dangerfield? A lovely, kind soul. Actually, okay, so here's the thing. First of all, I'm bad with names um, to begin with, but I also got like eight recommendations for clothing on one stream, and so my brain sort of lost things in the shuffle. But somebody recommended Dangerfield. Whoever you are, you know who you are. Please and identify honestly, yourself. Honest. Show yourself. Honest to snod. You have <laughs> completely changed our wardrobe. And changed our lives. One, one specific. I have been looking for one specific piece of clothing for an eternity now, for lifetimes. Like yeah. I feel like Many in lifetimes. another lifetime, my, oh my God. myself or my spirit. I don't know exactly how that works, but it feels like this is something that I had been looking for for a really long time. And I know that you're meaning, it finally like, happened because it wasn't in my size for so long. They were sold out. And they were sold out. And I was like, ah, clearly this is just never happening. And it was on yeah. sale. So I was like, this is a one time thing. Not meant to be. But our quest has been accomplished. Our quest has ended. It's been mission accomplished, prayers folks. Have been answered. Gays, theys, and bays. I have. Look at his overalls. I have overalls. <laughs> They're so cool. I look like I just got done chopping you do. wood. I could have been. Off the farm. I could have been. Look at look you gotta it. do got, the look how many pockets I got two oh showing the cheeks four showing the five. goods it's it's I'm like a little kid. we decided you have many pockets we decided we don't care for kangaroos just the way they're built you and our friend decided that I never decided that oh my well it's not that I just like kangaroos I, I think kangaroo. they're cool you got a kangaroo pouch I got a kangaroo pouch this is it's probably a bit higher. This is what we have been looking for for eons. I will say though, I have two layers of clothes though, and the nip slips are still like I'm Happening. still nervous. <laughs> Nips imminent. But I'm not gonna let anything gonna be fine. get in my way. And th- thank you so much for the recommendation. I feel complete. I feel like I have yeah. lived a whole life. You a have a full life. You have. It's, um, a, clothes, it's so funny. I could not give a fuck less about clothes. But they're so much fun. They're fun. They're so fun. I think when your perspective about clothes changes from like how other people perceive you to how you can like express yourself and just like have fun with yourself. Express yourself. Then it's way more fun to shop for clothes. Yeah. It's just a really interesting perspective. This is my first day wearing this. I literally got these last night and I was like, I have to share it with all of you. Haven't even washed them Um, yet. And I'm honestly, I'm not going to because they're not going to leave my body. Quite frankly, I'm sleeping in these. Also, listen, as a plus size person, I... And firmly, y'all can call me gross if you want. I don't care. I don't wash my clothes after I get them because if I like the way that they fit straight yeah. out of the package, there's a 50-50 chance that after I wash them that they're going to fit differently. It's so a real problem. So I choose to wear them <laughs> out of the package while they're still like dirty technically while they fit well because I want the dopamine of, of one good wear at one least. good wear if they you deserve get, that yeah if they you get fucked that. up in the wash then like at least I so got one it. you know but I also the other thing about it that's really frustrating mm-hmm. is that after you wash them you usually can't return them oh. so it especially chaps my ass to be like well I can't even fucking return this now like it fits different and I mm-hmm. can't even return it and I didn't even get to wear it. Yeah, it's a fucking crime. That sucks. No, it's trash. This it sucks not a fair. lot. I, I will say I'm very thankful as a, you know, I'm sorry that you- A straight You have given me so much- well, straight uh, sizey. Yeah, a straight <laughs> sizey. Uh, but for real, like that's something I never would have thought about otherwise. Mm-hmm. It blows. Yeah, also speaking of, I I don't know if it's TMI or not, but I was like, damn, I'm gonna have to get butt ass naked to go to the bathroom in these. You understand now. But I don't. But I don't. The privilege, Why? the privilege is oh, privileging. Oh, you just flopped your business out the. Did you flop I want to use the term. I want to use the term. No, I do. I don't want to. Did like, you unbutton the side and flop I, your stuff out that I, way? I I don't know how in in depth. No, I didn't go out the side. You're like I don't know. I um, I don't have a penis. I want to use. I know. I keep wanting to use the word the term little gummy worm. You but, should. Um, it's funny. Let's just say. Um, it's, I'm sorry again that 
uh, again. Why are we talking having, about dicks again? Hey, this always happens to us. This um, is the, the dick and poop I, podcast. As we are, as we are. Hello, everyone. Hi, welcome to their. Hi, this is actually called. We should unpack this, this. We should unpack this. I that person that your name is. There's a lot to your Aaron. name is. Who? My name is. Uh, Aaron. My name's Mickey. And the person who will not be named, uh, I don't care. In my heart, there's a lot to unpack here lives on. In my heart. We did change the podcast name. For those of you who are confused, it's not a Mandela effect. We did change it. It's been changed for forever now. It was a thing. We don't want to talk about it. Can I talk about something super... It's not embarrassing for us. Point of order. Yes, of course. Another thing that's also not a Mandela effect, there is new stuff on the wall. No, you can't tell people because it's so yes! fun to watch them figure it out. No, I don't want to stress well, people fi- out. Pick, tell us which pieces you think are new and see if you can figure... It's like subliminal messaging. I made it. I'm really proud of it's it. It's a really good fucking poster. It looks I like a poster that effect. was in an old saloon. Yeah, I love the filter you did on it or the Thank little you. like old-timey effect. It's so fucking perfect. I love it. But I would like to share the story of Savannah, if I may. Ooh. Yeah, we've had a major live event again, again somehow. Again. Oh, also, should we get should, mm, share the story of Savannah? I want to do our our bit because I'm hungry. I'm hungry too, honestly. And now that I'm thinking about it, I think the story. Well, Savannah recently had surgery. Yeah. We went from taking our our poor pup. Um, we knew it was coming, so we did. She had TPLO surgery in 2022, which and is, we were told. It, yeah, it stands for trans, like tibial plateau leveling. Basically, her doggy ACL snapped. Yeah, she um, had like dog orthopedic surgery. Yeah. It's a whole thing. And uh, apparently, we got really lucky with the breed. Savannah got really lucky as uh, a lab, yeah. mo- a, mo- a mo- mostly lab. Yeah. I can do words. M- 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 mo- m- mostly. Um, as a friendly PSA, if you notice when your dog sits down, I'll put up a picture of Savannah sitting. Um, Do if your dog those? sits like this with her knee under her instead of with their knees like little frog legs, you know how Vanny had one tucked under her? Yeah. That's a sign of knee weakness. Oh, really? Yeah, I've been like looking into like TPLO risk factors and whatever, um, which can mean that you might end up having to pay for dog surgery, Ugh. which is quite expensive. It's in the thousands of dollars. Can we just say though? Because they, we were ready. We were ready, especially because in We'd 2022, been, like, squirreling we, money away. We were ready. Yeah. Um, and they were like, oh, you know, with inflation and stuff, things have gotten a little bit more expensive. Uh huh. And almost to the dollar amount, it was the same price. It was almost exactly I the same. It, it, the surgery has stayed the same more yeah. than McDonald's has. And also, Incredible. I will die on the hill mm-hmm. that it is entirely possible oh, for yes. human doctors to do what veterinary doctors do, which is give you an item by item printout. The whole down, procedure. Down to the nitrile exam gloves, like yes. the surgery gloves that they use during the, the surgery. They price out each item and yes. then add it all up for you so that you can see, first of all, what it's going to cost up front. Yeah. But second of all, how they're justifying the cost. It's not just like, pfft, like a fuck off like number. Like, yes. Yeah. They're like adding it all up. Like this is what each glove costs. Mm-hmm. This is what like the, you know, the radiogram costs, like all the things. Yeah. It's Why not, can't we do that? Literally they can. They could. And they would never. It drives me bananas. Um, Speaking of bananas. Yeah. Are you ready? Are we doing the thing? Yes. I'm going to get rid of okay. this real quick. Okay. This is something that I've been looking forward to all week. And by all week, I mean the two days that we have had this idea. <gasps> Did you break something? Keep talking. Are we all going to die? No. Not so fun fact about having a separate... Filming spaces that you have to clean it also. <laughs> Punk, I have to tell I you. I know, you have to clean your house and where yeah. you work? Bullshit. That dance move was sick as fuck, though. Oh, really? I loved it, okay, yeah. Okay, cool. Hell yeah. Hell okay. Yeah. So All right. We, uh, should oh, we tell everyone what we're talking about today generally, or we just want to get... Yeah. We'll just keep them blind like we normally do. Yeah. Okay. Story time. So we're doing a TikTok trend. Um, because what better place to do TikTok trends than on our YouTube channel? On the podcast. We're terrible at doing TikTok things on TikTok, so we're doing it here instead. Not very good at social media. Also, I feel like you guys would appreciate this more. I do want to give you a trigger warning, though, for like general trauma. I don't know what your things are. I know what mine are. We're talking about childhood trauma today and yeah. like some like contentious, <laughs> like childhood abuse Mm -hmm. stuff going in just no we're talking about our own traumatic experiences some of them but But like things that are kind of funny they're funny now you know how sometimes when you like obviously when you're being traumatized it's not funny but then like later in life you look back on something and it's like traumatic but also a little bit funny 
We're yeah. sharing some of those things. You gotta today. laugh. Sometimes, you know. I sometimes the circumstances some stuff, of something are so stupid. Oh my god! Like that you're like you can't this even didn't this is happen. Happening. Yes, yes. Yes. So we're sharing like stories like that. Um, and while we do that, we're making ourselves a candy salad because what better snack to have on the pod I'm than so candy hungry. salad? This is not what I should be eating on an empty stomach, but we're gonna do it anyways. What are you gonna do, baby? Um, I realized, I just realized now too, not to ruin something, this is something you would do, I feel like, but in a sense, it's kind of just trauma bonding. Bonding over trauma, but yes. Bonding over trauma. Yes. Yeah, that's that's the word I meant. I know. That's why I keep you around. Yeah. It's Thanks just for being a, part of the show. It's a pet peeve. Oh, no, okay. that's, it's actually more appropriate. That makes a lot more sense. Okay. Do you want to go first or do you want me to go I first? I have more, I think. So you go first. Um. So I'm going to go first. I had to dig deep for some of these. I've, I'm have i a bit of an inside cat, I've realized. Okay. Oh, you pre-opened these? Yeah, so okay. that they're easy. I also cut off all the little things Thank for the you. zippy also, bags. Needless to say, we don't need to put the whole bags of each. No, in of there. course. Okay. Some of mine. I got the share size because I didn't want to buy the like. <laughs> Here you get two gas you station get two size. Yeah. Yes. So, but you know, it's 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 what it is. You also, I have a hard time gauging size on like Target.com. They don't do it a doesn't good job. really show they, you. They really should be using bananas or something for scale. I think so. They would help out a lot. <laughs> I think it would I don't a know, lot because some bananas like have been. That's the joke I think oh. about banana for scale. <laughs> Wait, really? Isn't it? Well, no, yeah, that's I think part it's just of the a joke. Is like a good scale because people te- tend to well, know. Well, yeah, it. but it's also part of the joke is that bananas are sort of variable in size, though. If that's the case, I haven't been understanding that this whole time. Is that, did I make that up? Is that not part of the joke at all? I always thought that was a funny reason to use a banana for scale because I was like, that's a non-standard object. Isn't that sort of silly? Like, why not a water bottle? I feel like an ignoramus you know? right now. Like, <laughs> that can't... But, like, that makes sense. But then to admit that I didn't know... We didn't want to use a soda can. <laughs> we didn't want to use, like, a... So at that point, you might as well just use your pencil. hand. Pencil. Yeah, no, Exactly. <sighs> That's so silly. Let's get started. Okay, so when I was a kid, <laughs> <laughs> I wonder which one this is gonna be. When I was, you don't know about this, I don't think. When I was a kid, <laughs> I thought that there was something deeply and embarrassingly and shamefully wrong with me for a really long time because growing up, my mom washed my laundry when I was little before my brother mouthed off and got us both in trouble, so I had to wash my own laundry. Um, my mom washed our laundry and she took some of my underwear and she told me that the amount of discharge in my underwear was disgusting and that it was like not normal. So I didn't know that other people had <laughs> discharge until I was like a grown up, like I had a college roommate <laughs> who also told me about her discharge and I was like, you have that <laughs> You were like, you have it too? Like a secret club? Like you had a secret I was power this whole truly time. Truly under the impression that I was going to die. <laughs> There's no yes. normal amount of discharge, right? Or no, I mean not really. People's discharge will vary from person to person, and like if anything diverges from what your normal is, you should speak to your doctor about it. Oh my but god! But I thought no one else had discharge. I thought I was the only <laughs> person with vaginal discharge, and I brought the nerds gummy clusters. Classic. What did your brother say to get you guys no more laundry? My brother didn't have underwear to wear to school. <laughs> and he was running around. We were running late for school. And he was like, well, someone would have done my laundry. And my mom was like, fuck you. Wash your own laundry, bitch. And you too. And I was like, why am I catching this stray? What the fuck? Did, fuck me. What did that I fucking like corporal do? Corporal punishment or everyone. Not corporal yeah. punishment, but everyone. <laughs> group, puni- group punishment. Yeah. So um, we both had to wash our own laundry. My mom put a stool in the laundry room. That's how little <laughs> it was. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. And now you've never let it go that you've been doing laundry longer Correct. than me. Yeah. But you're um, just better at laundry, baby. So I always think it's funny now because like I really don't like fishing now um and i'm not very good at it and i feel like that's probably something you learn when you're younger yeah um but when i was younger my grandpa and grandma i would go up there and uh we also during I'd, we'd go up during the summer and like we'd go camping and stuff or whatever yeah um also looking back on it they used to send me to summer bible camp mm-hmm. uh wild yeah that's weird. i can't yeah I, I don't remember retaining any of it either so they were just wasting their money <laughs> just like just i can't imagine you way, in bible camp uh me neither I don't remember making a single friend or like doing bizarro. anything or like bizarre. Yeah. Absolutely bizarre. Um, but so we went fishing and uh, I, obviously my grandpa was teaching me how to fish. And so I sling that sucker back and I fucking get ready to cast it out. And it didn't go anywhere and I didn't see it hit the water. And I just look back 
and my grandpa he's keeping it cool calm and collected <laughs> um but i fucking hooked his his eyebrow like good i thought it was like, his eyelid no it was his eyebrow oh okay that's no. less horrifying yeah it's still not great though <laughs> but i remember i tugged on it a couple of times and it Ooh. didn't go anywhere um <laughs> And so he was obviously very frustrated with me, but he was cool. He didn't yell at me or nothing. That's really um, sweet. But he never took me fishing again. Yeah. After that. <laughs> no more so, bonding time for you. Yeah. So yeah, yeah that's, that's it. it. That's would, why I don't know how to fish now. What'd you bring? Uh, I brought peach rings. Aaron really likes peach rings. They're good. They're tasty. You, you have to rip it a little more, my love. Okay. Put your peach rings in there. Put your peach rings in there. Put your peach rings. Put your peach rings. Wow. Perfect. So one time when I guess I was also in college when this happened. Lots um, of stuff happened in college. Yeah, lots of stuff happened in college. So I decided, or we decided rather, that we were okay. going to get married. And I, we told our parents about it. And we got married at the courthouse because we wanted to get married and worry about having a party later. Yeah. So we told our families and our like parents and our close people that we were getting married. And my parents <laughs> instructed me to inform oh. our extended family <laughs> that we were Big getting mistake. married at the courthouse so that they didn't find out by like someone accidentally posting the pictures on Facebook or something. How very sweet life of us. And <laughs> Or secret life. We call it sweet life. We call it the secret... secret life of the American teenager sweet life because Aaron doesn't remember the name of the show. But so they told me to tell my extended family ahead of time by like calling them on the phone so that they didn't find out from someone posting the pictures on Facebook. So I called my aunt um, and <laughs> I told her, hey, me and Aaron are getting married. I just wanted you to know because, you know, I don't want you guys to find out on social media. But we will have a wedding, um, and we are planning on inviting extended family Everyone to the invited. wedding. But unfortunately, there's just, like, a limit to how many people can be in the room when you have a courthouse wedding. And so with, you know, my parents, his parents, family, you know, whatever, um, there's just, like, not enough room. So I just wanted to let you guys know mm -hmm. and that we love you. We're not, not inviting you because we don't like you or anything like that. That was a lie, by the way. I didn't like them. But we weren't but not. We did the that nice wasn't thing. why we weren't inviting them. We did them. the nice yes. thing. We were children. I don't and think so, we were, like, 20 years so old. Then, those people, that that was my aunt on the phone, my Thea, and then her husband, my Theo, <laughs> um, wrote a letter to my mom <laughs> telling her from the time that I was a little girl. <laughs> I was like, I think the earliest offense <laughs> was like six. That I had been <laughs> an ungrateful and disrespectful and <laughs> just piece of shit human being. And he knew that I was trouble. He knew that I was a from seven bad years old. person from the time that I was a child. And he wrote this letter to my mom detailing all of these offenses about what a piece of shit I was all the way up to present day. Did they want payment? And like then informed my mom that they were hereby here to for to for to the future cutting me out of the family they were no longer speaking <laughs> to me and that if she didn't like apologize and make me apologize that they were also going to cut her out of the family and listen my parents didn't do everything right but my mom did tell him that he could go fuck himself <laughs> and so can you imagine we don't talk to that side of the family anymore can you imagine having <laughs> such a small ego that as a seven year old you somehow slided this grown grown grown, grown man, man grown man oh also i brought the skittles gummies oh that's a good one for those yeah that is baby dick energy that's so also, embarrassing like, like who does that when really bad people cut you out of their life yeah it's a blessing it's actually just a favor sometimes the trash takes itself out and what a blessing that God. is i forgot about that well i didn't forget about it but you isn't know. that crazy i can't imagine getting soaps also like what? that's weirdo behavior holding on to that this whole like you've just up been holding that behavior. in your heart I I guess. Do you think you're still the conversation at dinner? I no, no. not not now. Okay, a long time ago mm -hmm. when I was living with my parents, obviously mm -hmm. as a child. Yes. Uh, we had. I found out we have a stepbrother. Yes. And are we allowed to start eating yet? Well, I'm gonna mix it. Oh, good call. Um, I found out that we had a stepbrother and the whole thing ensued, and he was gonna come live with us. My stepbrother, um, great person now. Um, Shout out. But as a youth was you know and honestly not even his fault really like the foster system is fucking trash yes 
Um, I and was yes, uh, understandably so. And of course, we know this now as adults. Yes. But at the time in the early two thousands, um, yeah. My dad's tolerance for stress actually was really high, but also like was a very uh, was like low at the same time. Yeah, though. low yeah. and high at the same time. Uh, he worked a really stressful job, and yeah, uh, yeah. So low to- like short fuse, very short fuse. And I remember vividly coming home one day and my stepbrother had done something wrong. I can't remember what exactly it was, but like, for example, like one of the things that may or may not have happened was, I don't know why, but he was smoking cigarettes at a gas station, but like with the pump open um, and like almost caused a fire. Uh, but oh my God. So I can't remember I what had know. transpired because we both went to the same elementary school. What the and fuck? Ah, gosh, I don't know what happened, but my dad was real upset and he came home and I just remember being inside the house and I could see into the backyard from the kitchen sink and (laughs) my dad goes outside with a pole and we had a swing set, a swing set, a swing set, our childhood swing set. It was made out of metal, which in retrospect, a wild thing to have in this, in the desert. Yeah, weird. That thing would be like 400 degrees hot. I know. Yeah. All the thing, like it had a little swing. Yeah. We had the same one, I think. No, you didn't have the same one. Yeah, it was like plastic swings, and then it was like a teeter-totter, and then like a slide, right? And it was metal. Yeah. Like... The metal slide, and it was like a metal frame, and then it had chains. Did it have blue plastic over the chains? If it did, it was long gone. Yeah, well, yeah ours got sunburnt, Bait. too, and then it cracked off eventually, but... So anyways, my childhood yeah. play set, my dad goes out there with a metal pole and just starts wailing on this thing <laughs> like it took his money. Like... <laughs> That thing, that was a, uh, it was a, uh, I remember it was a little overcast that day too, Broken. obviously during summer, maybe it was during summer break, oh maybe it was during school, I don't know, but um, it was violent to say the least, it was an inanimate object, but I felt really bad for that playset. That's like so and dramatic, but also like such a crazy I thing think to do. Now that's why I always tap little cars and stuff, I'm like, oh it's okay, little, little, that's little guy. That's why you have so much compassion for inanimate objects. Yeah, I do, I really oh do. God. I um. That's crazy. Yeah, and I stand okay. by that. What did you bring? I brought. Let's do. Oh yeah, my fucking fave. These are I love fave. Sour Patch Kids. They're, They're like Sour me. Patch oh, watermelons. but these are the watermelon. Yeah. The best. Get in there, little guys. Get your salt everywhere. Real salt of the earth. Why? Candy. Why? Why are you putting enough candy in there to feed like a, a small child, Punk. sir? This is a big bag. Yeah. Yeah. It's we got lots of candy to go. I'll put more in there later. Wait, we can heap it. It'll be fine. Punk. We're going to... Okay. But put this some is, of the good shit in there. This is I didn't the good say anything shit. when you didn't put a whole bag of peach. Well, it's there because you, you filled it all full of gummy... Your gummy worms. Yeah, I did. And I would do it again. Share your next story. Okay. In keeping with the theme mm-hmm. of inanimate objects being What wounded. happened to yours? <laughs> okay. So, when I was little... <laughs> <laughs> you and I joke. I'm not going to say which parent it was okay. because we might have my parents on the podcast and I don't want to put their business in the don't street. Don't put their business out there, but I think I know which story this is going to be. We joke that there are my parents pre-cancer oh, and post-cancer yes. <laughs> after my dad got cancer. Genuinely. I think it taught them a lot of things about life and they like went to therapy and worked on their shit and like became yes. much better people. Yes. But pre-cancer, they were really working through some demons. Basically the part where we were children <laughs> in growing up. They were really working through some demons <laughs> and I, as an adult, have had to work through my own anger issues. Suffice to say that I know where I got them from because <laughs> in my childhood bedroom now, the childhood bedroom that my brother and I both are across the hallway from one another, they both have very large cork boards <laughs> over the doors. <laughs> and it's because <laughs> on three separate occasions, <laughs> three separate infractions. <laughs> Parent, one of my parents took a baseball bat. <laughs> and punched a hole in the door. It was, 
there was no children in danger, uh, to be clear. <laughs> it was kind of like your dad. What was that inciting? What was like trying inciting? to take some frustration out, but it was like a thing where like it was <laughs> something bad had happened. Somebody had violated the rules. And so then the, the bedroom door has oh, got, a, got a quick little wrap with a baseball bat. <laughs> Did, did both of your brothers and yours happen at the same time? Or separate, separate times. All the times were separate. Separate times. Yeah. <laughs> so we dealt. I just. I think the it's part about it that's, that is funny is that we dealt with that. I mean, they're hollow core doors. Like they're not did they expensive. Hit it one time or was it? Mm, I think one of them might have been repeated hits, but I think it was mostly just one. You think after the third one, time they would have broken all the way through? <laughs> it was like one, two, three. Well, it was like one, two on one, and oh, then we one in the middle. For, okay. Yeah, no, because they we all happened say, at separate times. We were making a point. We weren't actually trying yes. to get in. No, no, no. We weren't trying to hurt anybody. It was like a in frustration type of bit. But I just love that the doors are like the hollow core doors are not expensive. You can get one at Home Depot for like sixty five buckaroonies, and we didn't even place the doors. Cork we just bought a cork board from oh, like fuck. like uh, I don't know fucking Big Lots and yeah. put that bitch up over over top of it and said never happened. Totally fine. Nothing to see here. That's incredible. Do you think they remember? If you asked, probably no. But if I like jogged their memory, probably yes. Oh, what did you bring? Okay, I don't want to put those in there because I want these in there instead. I brought Air? Airhead Extremes Bites. Oh, it's about to get sour in here. Yeah, yeah. All right, are you ready for mine? Oh, this yes. is so good. I'm so hungry. My mouth is salivating. We're not going to get to eat till the episode's over finish, at this rate. Finish your, your okay. trauma. This is a duel. This one is a co. This one is a in tandem trauma okay. for both of us. Okay. Um... It's oh, so no. funny that we got in trouble for buying condoms. <sighs> That's not even it. But we got in trouble for buying condoms. So the yeah. deal was, here's the deal. I'm going to lay it out for you guys, okay? Yeah. This, there's nothing wrong. Looking back on it now, too, I'd have been like, we're literally doing what we're supposed to do. We were the most parentified, like, like over responsible. Like, we even had sex parentified. Yeah. Well, not the sex itself, but, like, the steps that the needed to happen to have sex. Yeah, we were, like, very um, prepared. We would go get Mexican food. Mm-hmm. There was a pharmacy right yeah. next to the Mexican food joint. Yeah. That Mexican food joint used to be so much better when we were kids. Mm -hmm. It's now a chain. Yeah, it it's not now. as good anymore. R.I.P. Um, and so we would go have Mexican food dates <clears throat> like normal teenagers. We yeah. love Mexican food. Yeah. And we just go buy condoms. Afterwards, It was yeah. the perfect no. It was the perfect cover for us to go buy condoms together so that it wasn't like one person has to be embarrassed. No deal. Yeah. <clears throat> but also like a nice date. And then it was like, you know. And then a nice date. Yeah, yeah, we didn't. Yeah. Not immediately after. Not after Mexican, no, Mexican food. food. We're not is animals. The least sexy. Yeah. Food. It's there's so much gas that gets produced in the immediate <laughs> aftermath. It just seems like an unwise choice. But anyways, but we were teenagers, so we didn't care yeah. about none of that shit. No. Also, our bodies were tanks. That's um, true. So, anyways, once they figured out the jig was up. Yeah. Am I allowed to say that? Yeah. Okay, cool. I don't know if that... Okay, cool. Anyways, we were... So once everyone found out, I remember you came to school and you were just bawling. Yeah. Um, Inconsolable. And uh, we thought that it was the end of the world. To no me, it doubt, was. No doubt it was the end of the world. Yeah. Um, told my parents, could not care less. Yeah. Literally, they were like, oh, is Mickey pregnant? And I was like, oh my God, no. Yeah. You're like, no, we're just having sex. Yeah. And they're like, oh, we figured that was happening already. Um, so like, and honestly, they were right. Which they is were fair, because right. also we had been dating for like over a year at that point. Oh, maybe even longer than that. Yeah. We had... Probably actually, yeah, longer than that, because we, we waited until after we were 16. We definitely platatonic friends before... Yeah. We met when we were 14. We started dating like yeah. some sometime in between there. Yeah, first was on there. our bus from one of the away yeah. football games. The bus yeah. is like the single most magical place yeah. for teenagers. It is. Like, There's a lot of hanky-panky that happens on school buses. But I think it's good. Too. I think it's good for kids. As <laughs> long as they're within. Yeah, as long as you're being like, you know, not weird about it. Yeah. I don't think we did anything. Anyways. No, we didn't so do anything weird. Once your parents found out, though, <clears throat> it was. Yeah. Code the shit red. had hit the fan. Yeah, push ten of it epi. It was all bad. And so we were all uh, summoned to your house. My parents' to house. To have a sit-down talk. By my parents, to be clear. This was not my doing. About us having sex with my yeah. parents. Yeah. So we all got to sit in the living room <laughs> at your childhood home and, and talk, talk about, about our how penetration. we were having sex with yeah. each other. And if you, I don't even remember... I remember it being so like like it literally lasted like thirty seconds. Yeah. Like I think because they, I think your parents wanted to do it, but I don't know if they realized how mortifying and Actually, embarrassing yeah. it would be for everyone. Uh huh. Um, 
Uh-huh. Yeah, but I think I guess it made our parents closer at the time. A bit of a bonding moment. Yeah. So Too bad that all went to shit later. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. It was the most awkward. It like skin crawl out of just. I don't think anyone could write a scene like that. Is like the office. Like that's like Scott's tots. <laughs> on yes, it was Scott's tots level like, of cringe. Like <laughs> skip the episode, bad. Like Ooh. the amount of silence, and also of course it was during summer, so it's hot and everyone's a little sweaty. But also, and it's just like your parents sat on this like tiny leather love seat oh. that was in my parents' house, and so they were crammed on this tiny little couch, all like a little bit sweaty and warm, and just like entirely not enough room for all of us in this. Like room. A little bit of weird shifting noise, and just like we're all. And of course, you and I weren't allowed to sit together, no, and we're just sitting there waiting for our, our like. I feel like we were in like in trial on trial. Well, and it was kind of this weird thing where like once the the facts of the matter were out, it was like. Uh, now what? Literally. What, like, what do you say now? You know? And for that, you and me. Yeah. You're my little Ike. And I'm Aww. your Mike. Wait, which do you want to be? Are you a Mike or an Ike? I want to be Ike because I don't want to be Mike. That's right. That's, that's, <laughs> you barely open. Oh, I hate this feeling of. Okay. I'm sorry. I brought I Mike and him, Ikes. I didn't want him to come flying out. Oh, God. Mike and Ikes are in the chair now. Aesthetic. Very nice. Okay. Only one is pretty good. That's fair. Okay. Next. Oh, there's candy in there still. Save that. Okay. So this was not in college. This happened as an adult. Um, one time. Somehow a, makes it worse. A, one time a really close friend of mine. Like the closest. Yeah. We got really, really close and shared a lot of stuff with each other. Um, that was probably the strangest series of like the weirdest 48 hours that I've ever lived through. In my entire life. Ooh, good color. That's aesthetic. Yeah, aesthetic. these are the like. It's like blueberries. Berry ones. Perfect. Okay. Okay. Are you ready for mine? Yes. Okay. Not so long ago, uh, was this during COVID or not? Basically, Mickey and I used to travel up to Phoenix a lot. Yeah. And a lot of our time was taken away, not taken away per se, but like was taken up doing things yeah. we necessarily wouldn't have chosen to do um, due to family obligations. That's fine. That's whatever. Um, COVID helped us like pull back a lot from that and it was really nice. Better boundaries. Better boundaries. Everyone loves better boundaries. So with those boundaries, uh, my family, my parents, um, <laughs> have always been uh, unfamiliar with the term and mostly my mother, <laughs> um, yeah. which, yeah. Uh, so anyways, long story short, Multiple years of Mickey telling me, like, hey, I don't think your mom really likes me very much. From the time that we were 14. I yeah. That. And you said, no, no, no. And you were right. Um, I think I've already told this story to some degree. Yeah. I'm going to use it again anyways. Just, this is my, yeah, just tell it. Uh, but fine. anyways, it's when, I, when, I, when you phrase it like this, it's so funny. So our birthdays are close. Uh-huh. I was given a, well, Mickey was given a Bob simple kiss. card. Nothing, really. Uh, not Who even say? exclamation marks, not okay. even exclamation points. Um, and I was given a lump sum of money. Uh, like $250. It was not that much money. Maybe over the course of It was of in the week. several hundreds of dollars. Anyways, it was very loud. So I asked my mom. I said, hey, mom, it would be really nice, I think, if you just didn't get us anything, if you're just going to get me a big gift. Yeah. And she said, what the fuck is wrong with you? How do you think that makes me feel? And said, okay, bet. So I'm not going to get you anything because I'm not going to talk to you ever again. Yeah, she never talked to you again. And then never talked call. to me again. And I brought Swedish fish. <laughs> you brought more Swedish fish? No, it's the first time I put Swedish fish in there. Oh, no, yeah, that's true. They're mini Swedish fish. What are we going to do with all this candy? We no way we can. Also, Eat the episode's it. almost over and we've... That's okay. It is okay. One thing I have learned. Can we eat now? Yes, you can eat now. Here, tip me. Boink. One thing I have learned in my life is that anytime I've been a third, you're always my number two. That sounded sexual. No. Like, in a group of friends. Mm -hmm. Like, you have two friends. Mm -hmm. I'm always the third. Mm -hmm. I feel that. I've always been the third. The I'm the third wheel. The friend who walks behind on the sidewalk. I'm the third wheel. But you, mm -hmm. you're my second wheel. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I will always ride, ride die, you. baby. Oh, my God. That is not what I meant to say. <laughs> your second wheel? No, I said I will always ride you. <laughs> I'm gonna leave it. So this has already been kind of a longer, epi a long episode already. Yeah. But you got some hate in, y in you still. Uh huh. Okay. Ooh. Those Swedish, Swedish fish, fish are suck. ash. That's not good. I don't know how much chewing noises you guys can hear. Apologize in advance. Those Swedish fish suck. Swedish fish suck. Why did um, you pick those? 
I don't know. That suck. Peach rings. Nerds gummy clusters. Okay. Mm. Oh, peach rings? Um, first and foremost, mm. I want to make everyone aware that Rosanna Pansino mm-hmm. did publish um, essentially like the employee handbook from Mr. Beast and Co. or whatever the fuck their company name is also, on her Twitter. And it's so stupid. It's I so said bad. I too because like allegations and everything aside, mm-hmm. for someone to make a document, a piece of physical... And also, it's meant to be read. Yeah. But also, it's so belittling. Yeah. It's so clear. The culture yeah. of... It's such bro culture yeah. personified it's in this fucking It's very frat bro isn't it? It's disgusting. And also, the shit like this, too, is like... You can motivate people to work really hard. But also, it's just like a fucking jerk-off fest to capitalism. Like, yeah. sacrifice your whole fucking life, all your free time. Don't think, breathe, or do anything else that doesn't yeah. involve making me look good. We're doing something for my company. Correct. And also the other thing I want to fucking point out in this mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. is you can't inspire people to rise up and be A players, which is fucking stupid and dehumanizing mm-hmm. to right off the bat just take humans and be like, you're either an A, B, or C player. Yeah. Like from the, It like, says that in the handbook. Because also, too, this perfectly proves the point that this motherfucker does not view people as people. Correct. I could never. I would never talk to someone you like this. You wouldn't make the content that he does if you did. And, like, this is the thing, because with this and all the other stuff, allega- all the allegedly stuff that is going on, but this piece of document is not an allegation. This is real. This is real. And it just goes to prove a point that, like, people, uh, you know what's funny? You know what it is? What? I'm just going to, I'm just going to, uh, he's a shitty fucking content creator and he's yeah. a fucking shitty business owner. And I'm saying it yeah. too. And I don't give a fuck. That's not alleged. I think that's true. He can't make true. content unless he's. Uh, abusing, exploiting people. exploiting people. He can't make. He can't run a business unless he's exploiting people or doing shit for mm-hmm. the cheapest margins. Mm-hmm. If I had that much fucking money, I would just make good products. Mm-hmm. Just make good stuff. Yes. Just do good things. You, you are. I just. It blow. It makes me so mad because with that amount of money, like we would. I genuinely like. I would fucking. We ah ah. I know you made a really good point too when we were talking about this privately. Yes, maybe you talked about it on the pod. I don't know. Yeah, um, probably was privately. Um, which is that when people who are stupid rich start businesses that are just like fuck off businesses. Oh, I did say this privately. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You said it's like, well, say it. Tell, oh. tell the people. Yeah. Um, uh, I think, no, you tell them. I'm forgetting. Okay. Keep talking. What Aaron said was that it's especially disappointing when somebody like Mr. Beast mm. who has like a crazy amount of fuck off money. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Um, starts these businesses like Feastables or Beast Burger because it's clear that he doesn't have an actual interest in food. He's not actually passionate about the product he's making. He's just yeah. doing it to slap his dick on something else mm-hmm. to fucking market mm-hmm. like a fucking like a dog pisses on something. It's a throwaway. Yeah, when you're it's just also doing a, it. Just, just it's, it's just a shelter. thing to do. I, I would yes. just like I just make it's, stuff. It's one thing for somebody who like you know if you're an influencer and you just so happen to blow up and you're really passionate about food, right? Like um. What's his name? Fucking the bald guy. Um, <laughs> what's his name? Um, Babish. I was going to say binging with Babish, too. Yeah. Um, Babish. Like, he blew up, right? And if he wanted to start, like, a candy bar company. That would kind of make sense. That would make sense. And, like, even if the product was really bad, I'd be like, well, you know, you got to work out some kinks. Yeah. Like, that's fair enough, right? And, like, hopefully, obviously, over time, they would improve the product. But, like, he, that man is clearly very passionate about food, yes. right? If he started a, like, packaged ramen line, I would, would buy that shit sense. in spades. And I, like, I get it. You know, yeah. he's clearly passionate about the thing. So, like, go off, It's man. fucking Kim kardashian Yes. It's capitalized, capitalisting. Is, 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 yeah. I can't think of a word, an adjective or verb, yeah, however I want to use it. Capitalism. You're, you're just fucking, it's so annoying because you're not yeah. actually making shit. It's fucking sugar pills like fucking yes. Chloe did or whatever. Yes, like, it would be like if Babish started a makeup line. You'd be like, where? Why? What are you t- or skincare line. Literally. Could you stop that? Like, like that's so stupid. Like Christine Why would you making do that? nail polish. Makes so makes much sense. Makes fucking sense. And, and also, it's good quality. Yes, I was going to say, when you're really passionate that, about something, yes. it turns out really well. Also, that um, nail kit we have is so fucking good. I know. Good. One of the people in our Discord actually has all of the limited edition um, boxes. And, <laughs> and for good reason. Um, like, and like, I get it. I really yeah. do. Because I bought a lot of nail polish back before I realized that nail polish, polish made me dysphoric. It's really Really good quality. Yes. Like it's it's the really good quality. Are so good too. It's well made. It's shipped in high quality yeah. packaging. Like that that company clearly has their shit 
together yeah. and wrapped and up I tight. Bet it's because you know? they're involved with it and they fucking care. Yes. And it shows. I bet you yes. Mr. Beast goes out and is like, hey, I want to do this thing. Someone take charge of this. If he is AI generating his thumbnails, I would not be surprised to learn that at all. That dude is AI generating his life. Like, genuinely. It feels like it. I, especially that part where I think in his business documentation, um, it literally says, if the building is on fire... Mm-hmm. Let it fucking burn down and yeah. worry about your own priorities Learn, first. Yeah, worry about your prio- your prios. Sorry, your prios. It's very important to shorten. If your prio is to like do something for a they video, they get a Lamborghini. Yeah, Lam- yeah, Lam- a Lamborghini, Lamborghini for a video, and the building is burning down. Like, get that Lamborghini. Like, what are you talking Who about? Says something like that. The other thing, too, that is especially interesting to me about this handbook, this manual, I'll link it in the description for you guys. I downloaded it for posterity, so I'll put it in the descripty. Um, what, am I doing that with my no, hands? No, I am trying to do it more fluidly, which is crazy because this is my... Anyways. Anyways. Um, the other thing that's especially interesting about this employee handbook is that... Oh, no, I lost my train of thought. You're talking about the Lamborghini? Oh, oh, oh. Um, we are like a... We're a two-man show. You know, we don't have fucking employees. We touch everything. Other than, you know, hiring somebody to do our taxes because I am really bad at math. That's different, though, I feel like, because that's like... Lots of people hire someone to do their fucking taxes. Yeah, though. that's a necessity. Yeah. Um, We're really bad with numbers. Also, I don't get it. There's so many rules, and then the tax don't try code to changes. It. I don't get it. Um, I don't care to learn it. No, I don't. So we hire someone to do our taxes, but, like, by no means is hiring someone who does hundreds of other people's taxes, uh, is that make... Does that make that person an employee? You mm-hmm. know, we're a two man show. We don't have other people. We are the elite employees. Yes. But even if we did bring on employees and we had to write a, like a handbook, you know, like there's no world. I mean, even like our mod team, right? Like our mods aren't paid. They're not our employees, to be clear, but they are our homies. You have a better mod team welcome packet than he fucking does. Well, that's for what his I was going to say. Yes. The mods are just like genuinely good people who help oh. us keep the Discord mm-hmm. and the live stream safe. Also, shout out to our mods. We love you. We couldn't do this without you. Um, but like in my like welcome stuff for the mods mm-hmm. is me being like, do less. Actually, like, don't worry Take about care it. Of yourself. Like, I specifically tell them about like YouTube comments that are terrible sometimes. Like, you guys are gonna see terrible YouTube comments mm-hmm. sometimes. Leave it be. Don't worry about it. It's fine. You know, like, it's fine. It's who cares? That's what it is. If we had a, a handbook for employees, I would be like, you know, who cares? Like, show up when we need you. Capitalism like, just, please, is the worst. You know, if you're tired fun. and don't want to come in, oh, that's okay. If just you, make sure your stuff's handled, I guess. Yeah, I guess. But like, if it's not, then I'll do it. It's fine. You yeah. know. If you don't feel like it, if you're overwhelmed, if your personal life is in a bad place, fuck it. Fuck. Don't do this. You know? Especially, like, do your stuff that, first. Like, that dude just making money hand over fist from, like, mm-hmm. ad, AdSense alone. Because mm-hmm. also it's the thing, too, of, like, more, more, more. Not, mm-hmm. It's never enough. Also, too, like... What is he interested? What are his hobbies? What are his passions? He doesn't have I feel any. like that's the thing too. Winning with rich is his people. passion. That's the thing with rich people too that fucking blows my fucking brains out. Is that like <laughs> okay. if we had a ton of money, mm-hmm. I promise you, you would know what I'm into. Because mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. it would just be ob- I mean, I don't know how much of their personal life they're sharing too. Maybe they are really passionate about something. Sure. Maybe they like fucking basket weaving or something. Yeah, I think it's or, winning. But like it's the thing too. Like you're, I guess you can be passionate about business stuff, I guess, but I don't know. That's not filling. That's not chicken soup for the soul. You know what I'm saying? No. Um, but also in the employee handbook, mm-hmm. um, one of the things it does say specifically, this is not a rule book. Um, <laughs> you're just going to get fired if you don't pay it. You don't yeah. do exactly what's in the bu- rule book. Yeah. You're going to be a C player who gets removed because you're poisonous. They should be, uh, they should be sent to another company immediately. Yeah, it, that's what it says. Mm-hmm. Um, but it also talks about how... I lost my train of thought again. Adderall is not helping. No. Uh, most of the candy's stale, right? No. The is airheads are the airheads are hard because they're airheads. I don't remember airheads being this hard. What about the Skittle? I don't things? know. I haven't gotten any. Mmm. Oh, they're good. Those are nice. Okay, I remember. Um, one of the other things in the employee handbook is about how they intentionally make content that's like extreme. I think that's what he's mm. like interested in. Mm-hmm. He gives examples about how to like properly title a video and stuff, which also like, you mean Mr. Beast doesn't do that? You mean he doesn't have final mm-hmm. say over that? That dude probably doesn't know what's going up tomorrow. What or the, the hell? Day, or the next day. Um, But he talks about how like, you know, making a video, I forgot what this specific example is, but like, you know, making a video that's like, oh, I um sat in my front yard for a hundred hours is not as interesting as like I survived. He was like, use the words I survived a lot. 
which I think is why so much of that content is on his channel. Yeah. But like, it seems like at some point they sort of turned a corner from like the theater of extremism into like the real lived example of mm -hmm. that and like actually subjecting people allegedly Allegedly. Just some really fucked up shit yeah. in in the hopes of just making like a weird, like zany video. It's the same way reality TV shows like mm -hmm. have to up the ante. Mm -hmm. Or like, but also we, like, no, they don't. No, they fucking don't. They don't have to. You know how I know that they don't? Survivor. Yes. Yeah. Is, that show has been on the air since 2000, and the premise has stayed Say. the same. The only stayed the same. The only reason that there has been a meaningful change to Survivor recently. It's literally because of COVID. They mm -hmm. were forced to shorten the thing and they now stay in the same location, which I didn't know. But truly, other than that, little to no meaningful change to the mm -hmm. show. And people eat that shit up still. People love that show. Yeah. Isn't The Amazing Race kind of the same? Like, they haven't really changed a whole lot about it, I don't I think. I can't say I don't know enough about The Amazing Race to say, but... I'm just saying, like, I don't really think that we need to be out here reinventing and upping the ante to the degree to which we're potentially harming people's lives and their mental well-being. I agree completely. If you make a good quality product... That's timely, that's interesting, that provides some kind of value to your viewer, people will come back and watch it. Mm -hmm. Like, I... I just don't agree with that. I don't either. Do you like Mike and Ike's? I don't know. I'm trying to get one. You know, I'm normally pretty. I don't like when we go to the movies. Like I want a pizza. Mm -hmm. I want a pretzel. I want some popcorn. All the best food at the movie theater starts with P. So, Candy starts with a C. So what you're telling me is that we should have made like a savory salad. I don't like this at all. What? I'm want, just telling you what I'm telling you. I want you at home to know that we made a like fruity gummy. Candy salad because you said that that's what you wanted. I, I offered to make a chocolate one. I don't think I would. Hmm, I might have liked that more. I got to tell you, this sounded better. Mm -hmm. It always looks. It looks. I got to tell you guys right now. This is a good it looks bowl. Looks really good. That's a good bowl. Careful. That's nice rhyme. Oh my God. Uh, that's a good bowl. Mm -hmm. But what I'm telling you is it looks better than what I want to actually taste. Also, I'm a little hungry. I'm yeah. actually very hungry. No, that's so. fair. But no, it's good. It was fun. We're like eating our trauma, basically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's like... Um, eat it and wash it away. Eat it and wash it away. Or shit it away, in our case. Yeah. Do you have any other thoughts on Mr. Beast? No. I, I don't think we have time for Blake Lively today. Ooh. Are you ready? Are you ready to pop off about that? I can give you a brief summary. Well, do you want to share your thoughts about it? I don't have any thoughts about it. I just know... Here, I'll give you a brief synops okay. synopsis Shh. of tell what's me in, happened. Tell me and our friends. Essentially, a Colleen Hoover novel got turned into a book movie i mean and apparently the subject matter is really it's called heavy. it ends with us and the mm -hmm. movie apparently really features um heavy themes of domestic violence mm -hmm. and so the male lead for the movie whose name escapes me has been promoting awareness for that and has been connecting people to resources about that and maybe doing a fundraiser for something like a charity or you know foundation something, or something i think which makes um sense. but blake lively who is the film's female lead has been like it seems intentionally maybe dodging questions <laughs> about the themes of dv or like you know partner harm like problematic relationships mm -hmm. um and just sort of like ha, 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 her way through the red carpet which has prompted people to bring up a bunch of past clips of blake lively yeah, that one with the one interviewer is hard yes to there's one interviewer from like 2008 i yeah. think it's a really old interview um or maybe it's from eight years ago is what it is but that interview is terrible go watch it if you haven't it's blake lively and parker posey um sitting down with an interviewer to talk about some movie that apparently is, I can't remember his name. He's a terrible director. It doesn't matter. Um, the director of that movie was also a piece of shit, though. Okay. Um, and they're just being mean girls. They're being really mean and, like, bullying this interviewer. And also, like, the interviewer says something about, like, congratulations on your bump because Blake Lively had just announced a pregnancy. And, like, was pregnant at the time. Mm -hmm. And Blake responds by being like, oh, yeah, well, you have a nice bump. Um, which prompts, like, a whole, like, you know, long... Like, tangent, oh, tangent of them tangent. talking yeah, like, about their own lumps and bumps and whatever um and the interviewer apparently struggles with infertility and all of that and so that she said was like like a bullet mm -hmm. having that on top of the fact that they were being terrible to her during this interview and she just looks so demoralized and sad throughout the whole thing and it seems well, like they basically like, took over the whole yeah it was a short interview to be fair but it was like bad the mm -hmm. whole time um so there's a bunch of clips of blake lively 
speaking to people in ways that are odd and weird and just really uh, strange. Really yeah, it's hard yeah to it seems like there's beef between Blake Lively and the male lead of the movie, though, um, because they unfollowed each other on Instagram, and so did Ryan Reynolds. It's like a whole thing. So that's what's going on with that. I don't know. I don't think it's surprising, though, that like the at the center of a Colleen Hoover inspired movie is a bunch of people and like white women who are dodging <laughs> being allies to like people surviving DV and like people yeah. struggling with really heavy things, you know? Blake Lively strikes me as super problematic. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure. Also, wasn't she like trying to get fucking uh, like plantation core? Going? Oh, no. no, she did. Oh, she did. Her and Ryan Reynolds had a um, their wedding at a plantation. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah. But then also, I when later confronted about it, defended the decision, I'm pretty sure. Oh, I think, yeah. 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 Just like really strange and problematic. She's also a Nepo baby, so like not surprised, surprised by no that. One. Yeah. Also, her job has been to play like bitchy mean people. Yeah. Characters mm -hmm. her whole life, so the like, mean girl, kind of like I don't know. I've never really. I don't think I've ever seen anything she's in. I watched. But my Gossip impression girl. is she's just as how she probably plays characters, just how she is in yeah. her life. It comes across that way. Yeah, it does. You know, like not actually really acting so much. Yeah. So that's the very short and abridged tea on Blake Lively. In case you were wondering, let us know what your thoughts are about that, especially for those of you who are more familiar with Colleen Hover Hover's, Hover's Hoover's novels. Um, because I have a feeling there's a whole world of unexplored beef there. Mm -hmm. You said you're going to listen so, to one. You're going to read one for the. Yeah. I mean, oh, sweet. Yeah. Okay, cool. Working looking on forward it. to that. I think I'm ready if you're ready. Yep. Are you guys ready? We're going to go. Um, please let us know what your favorite candies are. I'm mm -hmm. a what little disappointed. In your candy salad? In... I like it. <gasps> there's a oh, bug in it. No. Get out. Uh, oh, yeah. Son of a bitch. We have to go. Okay. okay. We bye, love you everyone. so much. We'll see you for the next one. Thanks for coming. Bye. bye.